Get that up there where it belongs. <laughs> you don't have this one. Ah, we don't have this one broke apart. Okay, well, you're just going to have to do whatever I tell you to do. Well, we'll jump from paragraph to paragraph. Okay. So you, there you go. Now you can get it started. Can you make it bigger? Sure. Let me spread this rascal up here a little bit. We'll just read it from paragraph to paragraph. I usually break it apart. Uh, <laughs> the last video we did, I jumped ahead and I was supposed to have this one done first. But Not my fault. No, nope, it's mine. I messed up. I jumped track. Got excited. <laughs> Hello, dear brothers and sisters, chosen, blessed, and deeply loved by the happy God. In Unsearchable Riches, Volume 111, pages 148 to 149, by James Carm, he writes, According as it is written from Psalms 4422, that on thy account we are being put to death the whole day. We are reckoned as sheep for slaughter. Romans 8, 36. You know, it is on account of God that we experience evil. And as surely as sheep. Are set, and as surely as sheep are set for slaughter, we will continue to be subjected to it. But this is only so that in the midst of it we might find the assurance of God's love. It must be a vast love. Ephesians two four. Full of patience and power, for the opposition is fierce and formidable. Through all manner of things threatening, threatened, threatened to separate us from God from him and do their utmost towards the end all in all creation nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord in all our pains we are more than conquering through him who loves us Romans 8 37 as good as it is to conquer it is far better to be inseparable from the love of God that would be terrible it would be it would be how could you when we are conformed in sh character to the when we are conformed in character to the image of God's son and given a glorious body even as his own Romans 8:29 and Philippians 3:21 it will be a great understatement to say that we have conquered our failings and overcome our afflictions as good as it is to meditate upon the marvelous and totally, total victory which lies ahead, it is even better to meditate upon God's present love for us and what this love portends, a sign that something momentous is going to happen. His grace upon us consists of far more than the eventual defeat of sin. It is riches. Its riches are to be found in the realization of his love. Since God is able to, and since he loves us, neither life nor death, nor messengers, nor sovereignties, nor the present, nor what is impending, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation will be able to separate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 uh, and 39. Through him who loves us, we are more than conquering. We are loved. But the Dewar translation reads in Romans 8, 35-37 this way. Who will disjoin us from the love of God? Affliction or straitened room or persecution or famine or bareness or danger or sword? According as it is written, for your sake we are deadened the whole day we are reckoned as sheep of slaughter. But in all these we are overwhelmingly conquer through the one loving us. Romans 8, 35 through 37. What shall be separating us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? According as it is written that on thy account we are being put to death the whole day. We are reckoned as sheep for slaughter. Nay, in all those we are more than conquering through him who loves us. Alright, our references start in Romans 8, 38, 39. For, oh, we just read that one. Is that the one we just did? For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor uh -huh. life, nor messengers, nor sovereignties, uh -huh. nor the present, nor what is impending, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation 
will they be able to separate us from the love of Christ, love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5, 2 through 5. Through whom we have the access also by faith unto this grace in which we stand, we may be glorying in expectation of the glory of God. Yet not only so, but we may be glorying also in afflictions, having perceived that affliction is producing endurance, yet endurance testing us, yet testing us expectation. Now expectation is not mortifying, seeing that the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which is being given to us. Second Corinthians four fifteen through eighteen. For all is because of you, that the grace increasing through the majority should be superbounding in thanksgiving to the glory of God. Wherefore we are not despondent, but even if our outward man is decaying, nevertheless that within us is being renewed by day. Day for, by day. For the momentary lightness of our affliction is producing for us a transcendently transcendent eonian burden of glory, and are not noting what is being observed but what is not being observed. For what is being observed is temporary, yet what is not being observed is eonian. Second Corinthians six three through ten. We are giving no one cause to stumble in anything, lest flaws, flaws be found with the service. But in everything we are commending ourselves as servants of God, in much endurance, in afflictions, in necessities, in distress, in blows, in jails, in turbulence, in toils, in fasts, in vigils, in pureness, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in Holy Spirit, in love unfeigned. In the word of truth, in the power of God, through the implements of righteousness, of the right hand and of the left, through glory and dishonor, through defamation and renown as deceivers of truth. As unknown and recognized, as dying, and lo, we are living, as disciplined and not put to death, as sorrowing, yet ever rejoicing, as poor, yet enriching many, as having nothing and retaining all. 2 Corinthians 11, 21 through 28. By way, oh, I'm gonna, yeah. By way of dishonor am I saying, as that we are weakened now in whatever anyone is daring, in imprudence am I saying it, and I also am daring. Hebrews are they? I also. Israelites are they? I also. The seed of Abraham are they? I also. Servants of Christ are they? Being insane, I am speaking. Above them all, above them all am I. In weariness more exceedingly in jails, more exceedingly in blows, inordinately in death often. By Jews five times I got forty save one. Thrice wow. I am flogged with rods, once I am stoned, thrice I am shipwrecked, a night and a day I have spent in the swamp. In journeys often, in dangers of rivers, in dangers of robbers, in dangers of my race, in danger of the nations, in dangers of the city, in dangers of the wilderness, in dangers in the sea, in danger among false brethren, in toil and labor, in virgils also, in famine and thirst, in fast often, in cold and nakedness, apart from what is outside, that which is coming upon me daily, the so, uh, solicitude, uh, which means mindfulness or awareness for all the ecclesia. Wow, that's a long list of stuff, ain't it? He went through a lot. Paul went through a lot. I ain't went through nothing. <laughs> yeah, we look around, what have we gone through? Second Timothy 1, 8 through 12. You may not then be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor yet of me, his prisoner. But suffer evil with the evangel in the court of the power of God who saves us and calls us with a holy calling, not in accord with our acts, but in the purpose of his own but in accord with his own purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before times eonian. Yet now is being manifested through the advent of our Savior Christ Jesus, who indeed abolishes death yet illuminates life and incorruption through the evangel of which I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher of the nations. For which cause I am offering suffering these things, 
also, not being ashamed, for I am aware whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to guard what is committed to me for that day. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-11 through 11. In everything, being afflicted, but not distressed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not perishing, always carrying about in the body of the deadening of Jesus, that my life also in Jesus may be manifested in our body. For we who are living are ever being given up to death because of Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. Now, whenever this corruptible should be putting on incorruption, and this mortal should be putting on immortality, then shall come to pass the word which is written, swallowed up was death by victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, yet the power of sin is the law. Now thanks be to God who is giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans eight fifteen through 18. For you, not yet slavery spirit to fear again, but you got the spirit of sonship in which we are crying, Abba, Father. The spirit itself is testifying together with our spirit that we are children of God. Yet if children enjoys also of an allotment, enjoys indeed of an allotment from God, yet joint enjoyers... <laughs> We're in, uh, so we are suffering together that yeah, we should be joint enjoyers of Christ's allotment. Of Christ's allotment. If so be that we are <laughs> suffering together, that we should be glorified together. For I am reckoning that the sufferings of the current era do not deserve the glory about to reveal for us. Wow. Second Corinthians twelve six through nine. For if ever I should be boast, wanting to boast, I shall not be imprudent. For I shall be declaring the truth. Yet I am. Re reticent. No one should be reckoning me to be above what he is observing or anything he is hearing of me. Wherefore also, lest I should be lifted up by the transcendence of the revelations, there was given to me a splinter in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, that he may be buffeting me, lest I may be, may be lifted up. For this I entreat the Lord thrice, that it should be withdrawn from me. And he has protested to me Sufficient for you is my grace, for my power in infirmity is being perfected. With greatest relish, then, I will rather be glorying in my infirmities, that the power of Christ should be tabernacling over me. 2 Corinthians two fourteen through 15 Now thanks be to God, who always gives us a triumph in God, and is manifesting huh? oh, in Christ, and is manifesting the odor of his knowledge through us in every place. For we are fragrance, well-smelling sacrifice of Christ to God, those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Become then imitators of God as beloved children, and be walking in love, according as Christ also loves you, and gives himself up for us, an approach present, and a sacrifice to God for a fragrant odor. Galatians 2, 20. With Christ I have been crucified, yet I am living, no longer I, but living in me is Christ. Now that which I am now living in flesh, I am living in faith, that is, of the Son of God, who loves me and gives himself up to me. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13-17 No, gives himself up for me, not to me. No, for for me. me. Sorry. Now, we ought to be thanking God always concerning you, brethren. Beloved by the Lord, seeing that God prefers you from the beginning for salvation and holiness of the Spirit and faith into which he also calls us through our in evangelism. In the truth. And, and holiness of the Spirit and, and faith, faith in, the, in truth. the truth. Into which he also calls us through our evangel for the procuring of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Consequently then, brethren, stand firm and hold to the traditions which you are taught by us, whether through word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loves us and is giving us an Aeonian consolation and a good expectation and grace, be consoling your hearts and establish you in every good work 
and word. Now may the God of peace himself be hallowing you holy, and may your unimpaired spirit and soul and body be kept blameless in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who is calling you, who will be doing it also. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24. We love you all. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you doing that, putting this one first? No. I got the other one already listed as being first. Oh. Okay. Well, anyway. My mama is uh, in a rehabilitation place right now. And so I dearly, dearly appreciate all the prayers and thoughts you had for us. Yeah. And for her. Yep. It's been a rough go, let me tell you. We got this video on the one, the next verse up. This is uh, 35 and 37. We just did 38 and 39. <laughs> Not my fault. So, anyway, we got them. The we'll just put them up and, and we'll get them together. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm wore out. I love I'm you guys. Out. And uh, we appreciate Judy and. Alicia and Sterling helping us put these together. Yep. Uh, I don't mention them enough. They're a big help in putting these together. And I appreciate Marcia helping me read them. Uh, I really do. It's, it's, you know, it's something that has your wife, your spouse beside you. Not everyone gets that opportunity. So I'm thankful for that. There's a lot of them that wouldn't want me to be their wife. That's all right. You got me. <laughs> you, she got a Mikey. I got a Marcia. <laughs> So, anyway, we love you guys. and uh, Yes, we do. We'll see you all tomorrow. Lord willing, if we're still here, we'll talk to you then. Love you much. Bye for now. Bye.